As you can see, I'm not Kent, um, <laughs> um, uh, but I'm the one who is actually um, sending the, uh, the patches for, for the file system abstractions. Um, uh, so we decided um, I'd show you guys a few slides and then we, we jump into discussions. Kent also has a list of things um, in addition to what uh, I'm going to show here. I'm going to try to be brief so we can spend most of the time on the, on the discussions. Okay. Um, so a quick uh, 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 status on, on, on where things are. Uh, for those who, who may not be following this, uh, I sent uh, an RFC patch series uh, sometime last year. Um, um, and there's some links here. And, um, there were some suggestions for, for, for things to change, and I made those changes back in January, and I just posted them on, on Zulip. I didn't actually send uh, them to the mailing list, but I did it uh, this morning. Um, I was planning to send them uh, earlier, but um, I decided to wait until the morning after a few beers last night. Um, so uh, a little bit of, of, of the goals of, of the abstractions, why we're doing this, this, this work uh, of, of building these abstractions in Rust. Um, basically, in, in, in Rust, we have the ability to, to express uh, more of the intent of the code or the requirements that the code have uh, in the type system. And this allows us to, to catch uh, more, more bugs at compile time. And I'll show you uh, quickly, a couple of quick examples uh, afterwards. It also allows us to automate some tasks that are not uh, very easily, easily automatable in, in, in C, and I'll show you a small example later too. And the result of these two things is that uh, we have a more productive um, developer experience uh, when we are writing uh, file systems in, in Rust, or, or code in general. Uh, when I add something, Ken? No. Um, yeah, so, so uh, um, as I said before, we get more, more bugs uh, caught at, at compile time. We spend less time uh, 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 debugging uh, these, these issues. So when I talk about developer experience, I'm not just talking about the time you sit down and you spend writing the code. I'm actually talking about the time afterwards when you try to deploy the code and uh, there are issues and you have to uh, investigate those p perhaps in, in production. Um, so you save uh, uh, a lot of time. Uh, by catching those bugs uh, earlier. And of course, uh, we also have uh, fewer uh, memory-related uh, vulnerabilities because of the um, undefined behavior uh, guarantees that, that Rust offers. And those uh, sort of um, eliminate or uh, modulo some, some bugs in, in, in the compiler and abstractions. It eliminates uh, memory safety issues. In, in my career, I've seen a lot of like massive two weeks, all hands on deck bug hunts. I, and we all have. Those kinds of bug hunts suck. And I've, I've been doing a lot of work in bcachefs to try to eliminate those and come up with better assertions and so on. Rust uh, does a lot more than anything I could do. The, the two main threads that I've been pushing on and I'm going to be talking more about the bcachefs BOF are undefined behavior, eliminating undefined behavior, and also better reflection. A, you can't debug if you can't see what's what, you can't debug if you can't see what's going on. Rust has some really nice provisions with that that are kind of secondary, but very useful. And lifting, a, we don't talk about enough about assertions in, in the kernel because reasons, but the, the end goal, like what I see in a couple decades out, Kernel development is going to be getting a whole lot easier over the coming decades. The, the, the end goal that I want to see is a programming experience where we've got a language where we can practically do embedded correctness proofs, where we know when we write the code that the code is correct so that when I finish a project and move on to the next thing, I know that I'm not going to get yanked back to that previous project debugging things. That's not fun. It's not productive getting yanked off to you know, the code that should have been done months ago. Assertions are what we're stuck with in C, but Rust can actually prove not just the simple stuff that you think with references, but you can prove a lot of code to correct us issues just with what Rust gives you. And we'll be talking more about that. Thanks, Kent. Uh, so, so uh, a simple example here of, of uh, the expressiveness of, of, the, of the type system. Okay? Uh, so this is, uh, uh, I get locked. It's a simple example, okay? but it's just to, to illustrate uh, um, um, how much easier uh, uh, Rust makes uh, uh, using this function, right? So, um, as most of you uh, probably already know, uh, when you call this function, you have to check, of course, if the function failed and return null. In that case, you 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 return failure, perhaps. Uh, but if it's not null, then there are a few things you have to do. You have to look at a field, the i state uh, field, to see if it's a new i node or if it's uh, uh, some existing one, right? Because here you're trying to to get it if it exists or, or create one if it doesn't exist, right? Um, and then if it is new, 
uh, then you have to initialize it and you have to remember to call unlock new inode. Yeah. The, the key word that makes all this possible is algebraic data types. Uh, C++ is just now trying to get algebraic data types and they won't be ergonomic ever because it's C++. Rust has really amazing algebraic data types and error handling. Yeah. Uh, but then, yep. Go ahead, Al. A bit of correction. Uh, it is rough counted from the very beginning. I'm sorry, uh, say that It again? is rough counted from the very beginning. Sorry, I could. I know is rough if I get locked, returns non null, yeah. the result is ref counted. Is ref counted, yes, yes. Did I say it's, it is? Uh, I get failed, expect uh, the holder of the sole reference to pass it to it, and uh, it drops that reference. It's, uh, to, you don't expect the owner to do what? Uh, What you have uh, in case of uh, I not being actually new uh, is slightly uh, misguided. It is rough counted. No, yeah, I'm claiming that definitely it is. so. Yes. Uh, it's not that you can call unlock new I not and blah 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 I not is rough counted. Otherwise, call I get failed if it fails. Oh yes, yes, okay. Yes, I, see, uh, I see what you're saying. Yes. I get failed takes the reference. It must be, the, it, it assumes that it will be the only reference yes. existing to the object and it drops it. Yes, yes, I, I didn't try to claim otherwise, yes. Uh, but what I try to claim though is that you have to remember to call I get failed, right? If you just drop the reference, for example, that's not sufficient. You actually have to call uh, I get failed. That's what I was trying to say with that, with that, with that line. Sure, right. You have, you have to get the facts of, of, of I get failed. You don't have to call it, but you have to get the facts of it. I think uh, the, the broader point here is that this is the kind of discussion that we won't have to have anymore because yes. the compiler will know. Yes. Well, I think the yeah. point is you don't need to have this discussion now. All you're saying is there are two possible return paths from I get, and we're going to use Rust to unify them, right? That's the yes, statement. Yes, that's what I'm trying to yep. say, yes. Yes, we don't yes. want to, to, to get into this, but... <laughs> yes, yes, but, but it's exactly, exactly the point. So what I'm trying to show here is that there's a set of steps and a set of functions that you have to know that you have to call under certain conditions, right? And I, what the result is. I also want to give a shout out to Christian Bronner and, and Alice Ryle. The early Rust uh, uh, FS12 discussions were, were kind of contentious and I, frustrating to me. The, the work that they've been doing recently is, uh, I, I want to just give a hand to, to them. Uh, They've been, uh, uh, Krishna has been explaining aspects of like FD uh, references that I wasn't even aware of, and now we're encoding that in, into the type system. This yeah. is going to make all our lives so much easier. So next slide shows you the, 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 the equivalent in, in, in Rust, okay? And the thing that I'd like to, to highlight here is, is, the, is the result type. That's, that's what matters to us. It may sound uh, convoluted, but the idea here is that uh, first, the result says that it may fail, right? So you have to check. Rust doesn't allow you to, to use the inode on, on failure because there isn't an inode. But on success, you have two options, right? You either get a ref counted inode that you can just use and it's fully initialized, or you get a new inode. I mean, it's not initialized yet. Um, and then if you, if for some reason, while you're initializing, you fail, um, um, then it goes out of scope, it gets dropped, and then automatically uh, uh, the right function gets, gets called, right? That's, that's the, the, the idea. You don't actually have to know um, uh, that which functions you have to call on, on success, on failure, it, it, it just happens. And if, if, if you forget to do any of those and you're required to do it, you'll either get a compilation error or your um, uh, code will return an error, so something like that. Um, but the idea here is that a lot of the, 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 the things that you sort of have to know about the semantics of these functions and things you had to, to do but were sort of implicit, you wouldn't uh, uh, have to know these things in advance. You'll sort of be guided uh, through, through the type system with, with errors at compile time. On, on, on how to do these things. Um, you want to say something, uh, Al? Okay, so uh, basically you are... So basically you are uh, splitting uh, ref type pointer to inode uh, in two. I'm returning, say that again, sorry. Basically you are splitting a pointer to inode in two types. One is normal ref counted, yes. another is kind of sort of 
And it's actually not uh, just a chunk of memory. So, uh, destructor uh, for that new inode yes. uh, is uh, uh, a lot more. Yes. That's pa parts of th that are already initialized, and uh, you can just forget about it. You can just remember. Exactly, exactly. That's, that's the thing. The, 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 the destructor of, of new inode is going to call that I get failed thing to destroy the, the thing. So it's going to call the right function. So what I'm trying to say is that you don't have to remember of, or know which function you have to call. And then there's, there's one thing that I didn't, I'm not sure if I mentioned here, uh, but when you initialize that, that inode, the new inode, it turns into the regular inode. So it's just a wrapper type, right? That has the semantics that it's a new uh, thing, and you have to call init on it, right? If you don't call init on it, then on drop, it gets, uh, I get failed. Uh, if you call init on it, and then it's initialized, and it's a full-on uh, a ref inode. And you can only call init once. If you try to call init twice, and this comes from, yes, the, yes. from the type system as well, it fails, right? So you have a new inode, and you can only initialize it once. That's another uh, thing. So that... uh, basically, you are, uh, well, C equivalent would be to drive annotations through uh, users of those pointers and have the function that currently calls I get locked uh, to express that as switch uh, from. Uh, you, you, you could do something similar in, in, in C, but the thing no. that I was going to say is that you cannot do equivalent thing in C. The things you'll miss in C is, is the, for example, the ability to only call in it once. Right? You cannot do that in C. This actually comes from, uh, from the, the, the type system being uh, a substructure. Right? C a, doesn't have that. Yes, I know. Well, uh, how would you express it in Haskell, whatever? Uh, OK, uh, so uh, basically, uh, you are saying that, OK, how much of those annotations need to go into the source? How, how much of that is? automatically derived and how much is... Uh, oh, there's nothing of this is derived. We actually have to get experts like yourself to tell somebody who knows how to write those, those, those uh, uh, rules down, right? And, but, so the idea here is to extract information from you and others in the room, right? And encode them in the type system, right? And then when people are actually going to try to yes, use that... Where in, where in the result in source uh, will uh, that information be encoded? Oh, it's, it's in the source code. It's in, in the implementation of, of that, right? Uh, a version of which I sent to the mailing list today. If you could spend a few minutes looking at it, I would appreciate it. The user there corresponds the Yes, uh, that's one part of that. Another is uh, how do we... Uh, well, actually, unlock new inode is actually needed. It's... Uh, yeah. There are... Uh, non-trivial cases when uh, you want uh, that sucker to be uh, locked after successful. Uh, uh, well, so, so not in the, in the quite I get locked, but uh, I get locked five, I think, uh, where you are using not, not a number as a key, but as additional yes. data structure. So you, you essentially need to uh, uh, say uh, at some point say that okay uh, I'm done uh, with that lookup and we could try to push that into callbacks for uh, I get locked five. If you if you actually look at it, it's it's more generic variant of this. Okay. Where we're using not a number. But something else. Oh, for the uniqueness of, As a of, key? of the yeah yeah. No, it's, it's not exactly uniqueness. It's when when we are looking by something different. By something else. Yes. Uh, sure. Yes. Then we are passing predicate and uh, another callback for certain. We could kind of sort of push everything into, uh, make sure that unlocking uh, isn't needed in the caller. Yeah. Go ahead. Dave. Yeah, and, and I'd be happy to. I'd be happy to generalize this. Uh, I'll, uh, I, I like the idea. Sorry, yeah. go ahead, Dave. So my question was going to be just looking at this. We're talking about the C code, which is I get locked. The Rust code that you've written, that function name is get or create inode. Yeah. Um, 
there's a complete disconnect there between the C API and the Rust API. You can't, we can't look at the C code and know what the equivalent in the Rust code is. Um, they need to have essentially the same names. Um, sure. And that's across the entire API. Yeah. Having, having a completely different, unfamiliar uh, API for the Rust code does not so, help us review it and determine what it is. And I mean, realistically, you know, this is what James was going to ask is that this is kind of, uh, you know, encoding the, the object model into the function prototype. Um, what happens when we change the object model in the C code? So we're going to have to change it here too, right? So this is actually right. a problem. Okay. Yes, it will have to be changed. Who's going to do that? Yeah, so this is and part of... It will have to be done at the same time because we can't change the C code and have Rust code that behaves differently. Um, and so there's a, there's, a, there's a disconnect there that we need to, you know, this is, resolve. Yes, um, I agree. This is part of the, what we need to discuss. Yes, that's yeah. right. I, I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, I'm kind of surprised that uh, XFS folks uh, hadn't given another abortion. <laughs> for that one, but uh, so XFS doesn't use this code. Let, let me make yes, what? <laughs> uh, precisely. <laughs> I get isn't a method, and it, this get or create I node is extremely bad candidate for a method. Is extremely what? It's extremely bad candidate for a method for super block. Uh, for a good and simple reason, there is a bunch of file systems that are not creating I nodes that way. That are not putting them into hash. So uh, making the, it's basically it's, uh, it's wrong from the type point of view. Uh, so. There used to be time when we had read inode as a method. Back then there was, yeah, there was I get, which uh, took super block and inode number. Yes. Uh, done all that and constructed inode yeah down in there. So, so let me tell you what I did. I looked at XT4, looked at how XT4 was building things, and, and I replicated that here, right? If we actually want to have more generic functions, that's great, we should do that, and we should encode the things on, on the type system. I'm all for that. Uh, about the, the naming, uh, I get locked, uh, uh, frankly, it's not a great name, right? You look at the name, I get locked. I don't know what, what that means, right? Uh, Pardon? But, but, is this the fight you want to have, right? No, exactly. So, 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 so what I'm trying to say is, yes. I don't, I don't uh, 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 mind changing the name. If you guys want this to be called I get uh, locked or, or whatever it is, I'm fine to do it. Uh, yeah. But I think we could take the opportunity now to actually put more descriptive names uh, on these things. It is not yeah. a method. Go on, Christian. Names, not, names be damned, it's not a method. Yeah. Okay. The, the, the it's not what? Yeah. It's a library function, essentially. Yeah. Uh, it is not a method of superblock. It's not a method of superblock? Yes. Precisely because it returns the object in badly, in, potentially badly inconsistent state. So and the reason for that, because I had been, uh, uh, I'm the guy responsible for uh, that bit of uh, uh, Oh, if you don't ugliness. want this to be a method, we're happy to make it not a method. This, this is not something we, 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 I want to fight over. What would be the type of that method? Then we'll change self. C-type system we'll is not. We'll change self to, to receive a super block. Of file system T. That's what it is. Not means. the problem. Yeah. Uh, the real issue is that uh, uh, having that kid on inode number and having initially, one thing you uh, haven't noticed was that uh, initialization might actually use more than inode number. Yes, I, I'm not claiming that it, it needs only the I even in case of uh, I get locked users. You might have additional uh, information you would need to pass to that. No, and, so uh, wait a second, please. Yes, sorry. Uh, the problem with old I get back when read inode uh, had been a method, and then it was uh, nice and consistent. You you call I get, you give it a number, it gives you a reference to inode already initialized. Mm -hmm. Initialization was done by read inode method, which got allocated inode and used that 
with number of reset. It used that to finish uh, yep. that. Unfortunately, for a bunch of file systems, that led to extremely unpleasant uh, convolutions because you, what you really want is opaque object instead of final number. Yeah. Pass to that sucker. And essentially, what you want from uh, that uh, read inode is to be partially applied function. Sure. Had it been Haskell, sure, no problem. It would be a function that takes inode and returns void. Yeah. You pass it to uh, that I get, uh, having given it uh, inode number as uh, the first argument, if it was a function that takes inode number and inode. I think there's a little bit of a conf confusion here. I'm not saying that inode number is the only thing you need to initialize it. I'm saying this is the, thing, the key you're using to look it up uh, on, on get or, or create. Right? The inode new that is returned to you is partially initialized. You initialize it, the caller will initialize it. It's, it doesn't come out fully initialized. I, I think what's the point also is that we're concerned with simple, simple file systems. And yes, we will need the full I get five that are already very good. Yes, we'll get the five version. Uh, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, and we get uh, redundant methods uh, that makes no sense uh, that makes no sense on one file system. Make we'll, we'll keep it quick. If Good you luck. want the, the, the more general uh, uh, version, I think it's fine for us to, to, to drop this and use a, a general version. This is actually just an example of how you'd encode yeah. the, the, the requirements of the other ones. If we, if we make it super complicated, then people are going to complain about checking in code that isn't used yet if it's only used by the file systems that only need the inode number version. People are always going to complain about something. But we've got to start somewhere. So two, two points. Yep. Uh, Remember that crack it. about uh, relative usefulness of uh, uh, flowcharts yeah, and I think so. uh, data type descriptions. Uh, <laughs> so think oh about God. data types first. <laughs> and Don't what you're doing is going the other way. Yeah. Okay. So um, I think to Dave's point, uh, we, and also to Al, if I understood you correctly, but my hearing is very bad. Um, we have to decide between generality, I guess, and uh, having a first simple approximation of uh, for an API where a file system can be written in or rewritten. I guess I'm not, not quite sure if we want to rewrite an existing one or yeah. uh, add a new one. Uh, and the, the bigger long-term problem is if you have a function like this get or create inode that encodes a lot more than I get locked, for example, uh, encodes, uh, there is always a danger that you start having a disconnect. And this is, I agree with Dave, that uh, at some point, if we change stuff in the C API, and uh, especially in the beginning, it, it'll be very likely that a lot more C changes will probably happen before uh, Rust changes happen, and you suddenly have a function that encodes very specific assumptions, uh, and then you somehow need to, basically you need a way to keep these two APIs in sync so that it still makes sense uh, for people that work in the C code, because we, we don't want to lose like the, these developers. Th this this kind of comes down to, do we do refactorings or not? Are we going to do refactorings and clean up and, and come up with better names? Uh, we, we have to do cleanups and refactoring, otherwise... We'll have automated tests for well, that. No, no, you need to repeat what you're supposed to do within the prison. Yeah. Uh, I mean, all I inodes don't have the same life cycle as well. So, I mean, as I said, XFS doesn't call this I get uh, locked function. It doesn't use any of the inode cache stuff in the VFS. It's got its own inode cache. It does its own inode allocation, does its own inode initialization, does its own inode freeing. Yes. It, it's all underneath. So it's got a completely yes. different inode life cycle. But we still need to do things like allocate inodes and initialize them and so on. Um, and XFS is you know, there are other file systems that do 
various different things with the inode life cycle as well. Um, so a function like that that says this is, this is how we create it and this is the life cycle it's going to model it's going to use um, doesn't match the way we actually use inodes and... Well, if, uh, if you're not using the VFS methods, then you're not using the VFS methods. If that's the argument, no file system uses the VFS inodes. The VFS inode is just a structure. Yeah. You know, it's an object that is, you know, we, it's part of the XFS inode. You know, it's a part of the Bcache FS inode. It's part of the XT4 inode. So, and that C struct is going to be there for a, for a long time, so I'm not seeing the issue. So, yeah. so, so Dave, to, to your point, let me just uh, respond to that. This is for, for file systems that actually use I get locked, right? For those who use I get locked, they would use this, and we can call this I get locked. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to do that. For but, the ones who don't, who use uh, uh, create or whatever other methods uh, exist, we would uh, create equivalent of those in, on the Rust API. That's, that would be the idea. So we're not trying to, to enforce uh, new ways of, of specific ways of doing things. We're encoding how things are done in the I get locked example here. Right, that's, I mean, this is that's early days. We're not trying to boil the ocean here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're almost out of time here, and I, I, th I suspect part of the problem here is you're trying to convince everyone to switch over to the religion as pro pro no. promulgated by Rust. And the reality no. is that ain't going to happen because we have 50 plus file systems in Linux. They will not all be instantaneously converted over to Rust. Before that happens, we will continue to refactor C code because we want to make the C code better. If it breaks the Rust bindings, at least for the foreseeable future, the Rust bindings are a second class citizen, and those file systems that depend on the Rust bindings will break, and that is the Rust bindings problem, not the file system community at large problem. And that's gonna be true for a long, long time. Okay. And I think we just simply need to accept that, yeah. right? Because the answer, you are not allowed to refactor to the C code because it would break five critical file systems that distros depend upon, is like not but a that wasn't starter, the answer. okay? Wait, wait. So like, we'll see. I, I, I suspect the best thing to do is you to continue maintaining your Rust bindings. Over time, there will be continued C code refactoring, right? Maybe we will start using, you know, uh, uh, K-free K RCU. If that breaks Rust, we will find out whether or not this concept of encoding huge amounts of semantics into the type system is a good thing or a bad thing. And instead of trying to convince us what is actually correct, let's see what happens in a year or two. And it will either work or it won't. And we will see, more likely, where does the pain get allocated? Because with most of these sort of engineering things, it's almost always a pain allocation question. So, so, <laughs> so Ted, let, let me try to, to respond to that. I'm, I'm not saying that C is going to be uh, stuck in whatever it has. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. I actually, what I'm trying to say is I want to, to, for you guys to tell me uh, what the semantics are of these things that will reflect in Rust. That's all, that's all I'm saying. No, no, but, no, but, no, no. But wait, no. but the fragility, the, from my point of view, is the same of any user, right? Users of these APIs, they, they have to know about these semantics and they have to use them, right? And the rule is, if you make a change, a semantic change, you have to go and fix everybody else who, who you have yeah. broken, right? Uh, while, while Rust is a second uh, uh, class citizen, I'm fine for you guys to say we, we don't care about this. Uh, uh, you guys so should, should Here's look at the it. thing. You're not going to force all of us to learn Rust. If I make a change, I will fix all of the C code because that's my responsibility. Ted. Because I don't know Rust, we're, I'm we not going to fix okay with the that. Rust bindings. Ted. Sorry. Ted, l l let me try to say it more clearly. I'm not trying to force you or anybody else to do anything else, right? I'm just guys, asking politely uh, to see if you guys could give us semantic information. That's, that's all I'm asking. Guys, uh, there is a bit of a problem. Uh, uh, I wasn't sure how to describe, but I think now I do. Uh, I don't want to insult any language by comparisons with Java, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, there is a rather sick uh, tendency to confuse functions and methods. Uh, and yes, I know about that lovely style that uh, everything is an object and uh, there is an object called, well, entire program and any unattached 
uh, function is declared of me as method of that, but let's not go there. The, the We've seen what kind of shit Java is. Let's try to step away from that. Let's not lose uh, the information, well, actual, what actual methods are and what uh, library helpers are. The distinction between methods and functions is a much bigger, bigger deal in languages that lean heavily on, on inheritance. Yeah. Uh, leaning heavily on, on inheritance is a crap idea, as we've seen in C++, because it makes the thing that you include implicit rather than explicit. Rust does not lean heavily on, uh, on, meth on inheritance. Yeah. Methods that are in Rust are more a simple syntax change than anything. Syntax sugar, yeah. Again, uh... yeah, there's no concept of inheritance in, 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 in Rust. We can convert everything, all of these, we can convert them into regular functions, and it'll just take extra arguments. That's okay. I, I would like to understand one thing. Uh, so here you encode some kind of behavior for, for the inode type, yeah, basically. And yeah. I would like to understand. So. This basic, because I know close to nothing about Rust. So, so this actually encodes the behavior only for the callers of the get or create inode, yeah. or this actually encodes some properties of the inode type itself? So the, the either up there, that encodes I knew. So yes, we're, 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 bringing, we're bringing things into the type system. For, 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 so so the, the inode new has some, some, some stuff that is uh, in addition to the regular uh, inodes, right? The ability to initialize it and turn it into, into a regular um, inode. Um, but but that, that's still the stealing uh, information that, that is, is sort of like floating in the, in the C case. Yeah, because, because I, I see here like two, two, two different things here. One is like the behavior of the inode type itself, and that's kind of like it's ref counted, you know, when the ref count goes to zero, something should happen and so on. So, so this is really the property of the inode type. And then there are other kind of properties like the behave, like the more advanced thing you have here encoded, and that are not really the properties of the inode type, but they are really properties of this function call, yes. essentially. Yeah? Yes. Like, like must check the result is, is one of the properties yes. of the yes. function yes. call, actually. So, and and that on success, you'll be either a fully initialized or a partially initialized inode. It's also a property of the function. Right. Uh, actually, uh, I would probably describe it a bit differently. Uh, think of uh, encoding inode state as in uh, life cycle stages. And uh, has I knew on it is definitely a distinct uh, stage as a different type. Encode uh, the information about state of inode in terms of uh, uh, FSM uh, of, of its uh, life cycle into uh, the types of uh, pointers, and uh, in that sense, yeah, uh, sense. I would uh, uh, probably pick some. Uh, fights about uh, exact details, but uh, that's essentially uh, what I get locked does. It uh, it gives you one, or, and uh, yes, you need to keep in mind w that uh, uh, I cache lookups uh, on the same key, uh, running into uh, that uh, partially allocated. In that partially initialized inode will uh, end up blocking and uh, that information about uh, life cycle uh, gets uh, encoded into type system and that's actually reasonable. Having uh, some way of, uh, when, you are, when you are trying to uh, audit the code, the first thing you have to do is uh, pretty much uh, figure out which states, mm -hmm. um, the objects pointed by argument, this argument of this function might possibly be. Having that uh, verifiable, uh, as much as possible verifiable on compiler level, uh, co compilers as parse whatever, uh, would definitely be a good thing. Uh, the question is uh, how uh, closely uh, how closely does that match uh, the actual uh, FSM for inodes? And that uh, is where, okay, we start with simple ones and then 
uh, rework it uh, when we get uh, when we run into something more complicated. That um, yeah, I, I realized into the talk this maybe wasn't the first thing to throw up there because this is the complicated case. <laughs> oh no, it is not. <laughs> we have much more complicated cases, but yeah, this was not a trivial case. Well, let's not even talk about us yet. Yeah, yeah well, I think um, it was a great session, great roast. We need to give the, the storage guys an opportunity to roast the Rust delegation as well. Yes, we're past the time. Thanks, guys.